I don't even want to do this. <laughs> it's true. And I, and I don't mean tonight. I mean, like, as a career. I'm done. I don't even like it. I didn't even think I'd end up doing this. I didn't think I, you know, you know, I always thought I was going to be a social worker. That's what I thought I'd always be. Because everyone used to tell me, you're a good listener. You should be a social worker. You can listen to people's problems. You're a good listener. Then you realize that's not even a compliment. <laughs> they, just, they just have exhausted their attempts to notice any strength that you might have in any area <laughs> they come up with. We've noticed you have the ability to hear sounds <laughs> and process them and, as noise in your head. So you should be, and you run with it. You think, oh my God, what a compliment. When I was in college back in Ottawa at Algonquin College, that's where I studied. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's another reason I'm a bad peer counselor, right there. People cheer and I go, no, my time. But I was, I was, I was in Ottawa and when I was in college, I was a peer counselor. I took all these courses and then I'd be in the peer counselor center and I'd wait there for other people to come in and tell me their problems. And I'll let you in on a little secret. On the chair in our peer counselor center, there was a button underneath the armrest. If the patient started talking about suicide, we were to press that button and it would alert a more qualified professional social worker to come down and take over. I used to press that button when I was the only one in the room. <laughs> and they'd come down and say, what's wrong? And I'd say, can I please have a coffee? And they'd say, that's not what the button's for. And I'd say, if you don't get me a coffee, I'm gonna fucking kill myself. How's that sound? Am I using the button properly now? <laughs> so I didn't get into that line of business. I, uh, I'm not married either. I'm not going to get married. My friend Jason got married. Well, that used to be his name, Jason. Then he got married, now his name's Jason. So I'm not gonna get married. I like the volume of my name when I'm single. It's nice. And that's an older joke. I've done that joke before, but the reason I did it again is because um, I've added to it for this reason. I did that joke at a show once, and, after, and by the way, I want to make something clear. I'm not reducing all women to that dated cultural stereotype of nagging a man, okay? It's just my friend Jason's wife, Lisa. That's it. <laughs> And the reason I give you that disclaimer is because I did that joke on a show and a lady came up to me afterwards and said, I hope you don't make all women sound like that when you do impressions of them. <laughs> so I want to be clear, you know. It's just Lisa and that other lady from Montana or wherever she was from, I can't remember. Oh. You know what I just realized? I have never had an epiphany. <laughs> my entire life. You know, there was a time in my life when, and I'll be honest with you, there was a time in my life when I used to hang around with the wrong crowd. And then one day I just realized, wait a minute. I don't recognize any of you people. <laughs> Like, I have literally been hanging around with the wrong crowd. Like, you kind of look like my friend Pete, but uh-uh, his nipples are way bigger than yours, come to think of it. So eventually, I started hanging around with the right crowd, and we did a lot of cocaine and shoplifted. So, sometimes the right crowd's the bad crowd. Oh, I have breasts now. I already hear. I do, I have breasts now. That's why I wear sweaters. To try and cover up my tiny breasts. I still call them tiny. I do, I have breasts. Never thought I'd get them. I, had a, I was blessed with a metabolism where I could eat whatever I wanted, never exercise, and I just ran with it. And by that, I mean I did no running whatsoever my entire life. <laughs> and then one day I noticed I had breasts and the day I noticed that I developed them was I was on an airplane during violent turbulence <laughs> airplane shaking violently and I felt this pain 
in my breath. It was like, ow, oh my God, I've never felt that before. What, oh no, ow, what is that? Oh no, oh no, they're here, they're here. Oh my God, ow. And it hurt, like there were nerve endings there. It genuinely hurt. And I was all alone in this crisis. <laughs> Couldn't share that with anyone. Now the only people I relate to are 11 year old girls. I'm like, are you developing? What's next for me? Are we gonna be okay? Are we gonna be all right? What's, oh fuck, your dad's coming. We can't talk about this, get out of here. Hey bud, what's up bud? It's true, I have breasts. So now whenever I'm on an airplane and there's turbulence, I do this and I stretch my skin back against my skeleton so that it doesn't jiggle up and down. I just, every time there's turbulence, I go, huh? <laughs> but now I'm worried everyone else on the airplane is looking at me during turbulence thinking, look how brave that man is. <laughs> every time there's turbulence, he gets brave for us. <laughs> he'll be our leader. If our airplane crashes on a jungle island, he'll be the one to lead us. He'll be the one to build a radio out of a coconut. No, I'll be using the coconut to make a bra, number one. <laughs> number two, that joke's not finished yet. <laughs> so we move on to the next. It is nice to be back in Montreal. Got the window seat on the way here. Drove. Not really bragging. It's a dumb joke, but it's fun to say. <laughs> I fly a lot, and uh, I don't know if you know this, if you fly as much as I do, but they have anti-anxiety animals on airplanes now. People get pets that they're allowed to bring on airplanes, and I'm not talking about guide dogs for the blind. These are people that get anti-anxiety pets, issued by a doctor. So that they found a connection between the soothing, calming effects of pet ownership and responsibility and the reduction in anxiety. So people bring these anti-anxiety animals and they pet them on the airplane and it soothes them. Like I have allergies, all right? But my allergy is apparently less important than someone's anxiety. Like I live in Cal, if you go to a doctor and he prescribes you a pet, go to another fucking doctor, cause that's insane. Mm, yeah, you're gonna need a Dalmatian, sounds like. It's insane. It's not a doctor. And I live in California now where people are bringing their pets every, they let pets in the grocery stores. I've seen German shepherds walking through grocery, there's food in grocery stores. And that last time I checked, there was food in a grocery store. Dogs walking through. Next time I go to a grocery store, I'm bringing a pillowcase full of bats. <laughs> and I'm just gonna let them go. And if anyone has a problem, I'll say, I have anxiety issues. And if I don't have bats circling overhead, I can't pick out the fresh fruit. <laughs> like, what a life. 